How do you set this up? Um, heel is going to be in line with the uh, top of the bar here. I don't necessarily think that. I also think it matters a lot more with the, but the, what the back knee looks like. Right. So yeah. So I think that 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 back knee has a lot to do more than the top leg. Um, I always try to get that back knee right behind that uh, barbell. Right. So I usually start like right. Put that pad right over here, or even put or even put the pad on the barbell. So like this. So usually your knee's gonna be here. Okay. Gotcha. Right. That's what I usually started out with. This. That makes sense. Yeah. So now I'll go ahead and try to grab it up. And we're, we're, there's only one way to find out, right? If we bring it up and it feels too tight, I'm gonna have them scooch back a little more. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, right. Okay. Good. And that's uh, what I'm saying. Sorry, there's not one or wrong way. You have to just figure out what works for them. Yeah. Right. If somebody's really if tall, longer, it might be different. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. All right. I'm coaching this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So, knee is going to be right behind the bar. We're going to still have this leg down, so we're putting pressure into that toe, that heel. You're not going to bring one off or the other. We'll be uh, flexing that quad the entire time, uh, flexing that glute on the arm that you're using, and engaging that core the entire time. As you pick the bar up, this is where you're going to engage that lat. So retracting that shoulder blade, pull, pulling it down, and as you go forward, you're going to go forward with the weight. So you're not just going to press straight up, you're going to press up and go forward with the weight. And with, then back down. Yep. Um, okay. You finished? Yes. Okay. So, do you just press with your chest or do you press with your chest and hips? Uh, I'm pressing with. Yeah, absolutely. Pressing with both a little bit, right? So, um, it, it also depends on the client. Like, if they start arching their back when they're pressing with their hips, you can keep it to just using their shoulders, right? Pressing forward with their shoulders, that way they're not arching their back at all. Um, what else could we see here? Give me other things that you could see here on the side or you need to work on with clients. Or what some, or potentially something you can run into. Something that could go wrong today? You, you, you could just run into, into the, yeah, I mean, I guess you might not know because you haven't done it a lot. Yeah. Uh, this exercise, right? Okay, so like some, something that could happen could be that people don't feel comfortable coming down. So they, it's kind of like the same thing as a push press. We can have really heavy going up, but then the going down part's really hard for people when they're going heavier. So they have to almost always, like they feel super unstable and they're going down. Another one is the wrist. A lot of people don't like the, the uh, landmine just because you kinda, it's like a big, thick pad. So you, they hold it like this, and I have to get them to hold it like this so it doesn't hurt the wrist as much, but that's gonna put a lot more pressure in the thumb. So you gotta be careful. If somebody has like weak thumbs and arthritic thumbs, you're gonna, which one do you do? You sacrifice it? So in that case, I might just bring it back here. You know what I mean? It just, it just depends on the, on the, on the situation. Um, let me think, at the top, a lot of people don't know how to like, um, go ahead and, and go back down. At the top, a lot of people don't know how to lock out fully. So the lockout is the same thing as a shoulder press. You don't want to be able to peripherally see your bicep next to me, right? You can see me, right? If you did it wrong, you couldn't see me from this angle, right? Exactly, right? So that's what I want to look at is, hey, where, how far up is your shoulder blade, right? And I'll also ask him, press forward with your chest. Do you feel that in your shoulder blade? Good. I want them to feel in their shoulder blade. It should feel like a stretch every time they're doing one rep, right? that we're increasing mobility when we do a landmine press. We're always trying to increase mobility. Uh, not necessarily go ahead and do it again yep. and try to get it into really, really too much extension. We don't want to feel that, right? We don't want to feel that. We want to feel somewhere before that, right? So we're trying to find increased mobility through a strength exercise. So it's kind of like stretching while also strengthening at the same time. Way less stable too. Absolutely, way less stable. Um, that is a good one to work on somebody that has really tight traps and lats. Um, so the more you get in somebody, like then, like week three, week four, you want to start thinking about that chest forward a little bit more, that chest forward, they're trying to increase that range of motion, so that way eventually they can get to dumbbells. This is one that we can't start using dumbbells if they're going to look like this forever. So we need to get into this point, and this one helps out a lot. We might have a program with three months of this back to back because they're just not ready for dumbbells yet. We can't really do any upper, any other upper sh uh, shoulder presses. The only other thing is when we're doing a med ball sh shoulder press, you're, you're gonna try to lock out, but some people don't lock out. That could be another idea for somebody that can't do this fully yet, right? 